What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Bing Woodworks, the road from novice to pro and do-it-yourself DIY. We're getting there. Today, I got something I'm a little excited about. I was able to pick up several slabs recently. Uh, a couple of these slabs are made for to be mantles. So I got two of these cedar slabs that I'm going to clean up uh, prepare to make into a mantle. Uh, I got two because one I'm going to let my wife choose and the second one I'm going to sell. So I've been looking in how to do it, how to get it done. First thing I got to do is I got to clean off all the bark, get it down to the raw wood, remove that, and uh, then sand it, uh, fill in the cracks with some epoxy, and sand it down again and then put the finish on it and then decide how to mount it inside the house so first thing we're going to do is take care of this bark um, i tried the chisel i tried sander i tried uh, wire brush a couple different things the chisel obviously worked the best and you can see some of that here um, but I want it to look a little more natural so I don't want those chisel marks on there and I don't want to have to do a ton of sanding later to get rid of them so I think the best thing to do is take it outside fire up the pressure washer pressure wash off as much bark as I can let it dry and then bring it back inside and continue on from there so that's my game plan if this is the wrong way to do it or if there's a better way man please hit it down in the comment section. I'll be reading them. We'll go over it and uh, I'd appreciate any suggestions that somebody might have. So let's get started. All right, so I took these slabs out, hit the pressure washer with them. It didn't work as great as I was hoping it was going to, but um, it did do a lot of good. Now I'm gonna clean them up, uh, sand them down, All right, y'all, this is gonna take a lot of sanding. So I'm gonna do some of this off camera. When I started this right here, it looked like this. Maybe y'all can hear this. That's just rough cut from the mill. We've got lots of unevenness. And even, I think I started at 100, I dropped it down to 60 grit. Even after 60 grit, there's still a lot of work to be done. So I think I'm going to keep it on 60. I don't want to drop it down to 40. But I've got to get this rough sanded and then bring it back up. And I've got to do the sides. So it'll be a little bit. Alright guys, so I have this sanded down to 60 grit is what it took it to get down and get the rough out of it. I have gone ahead and done some black epoxy in the larger cracks. While I was doing the larger cracks, I figured I might as well do the smaller cracks. And to show you how I did that, I learned this trick from Blacktail Studios on YouTube. He does some amazing epoxy work with some black walnut. And shout out. I got these off of Amazon. These are jello injectors. So I mixed up my epoxy in a little cup, sucked it up into my injector, and then just put it where I need it instead of trying to pour it out of a cup or 
use a stick and drip it where I wanted. I had a lot more control over where it went and how it got there. So now that that's done, I'm gonna do a rough sanding on this again to get this epoxy down. Um, the epoxy stood up pretty high where I put it on thick and a little trick to get this down so you don't have as much sanding is this is just a normal paint scraper. Nothing special about it. Some people don't know that this is more than just a, a blade that goes this way. It has a blade that cups back. So it can almost do like a hand plane. So these are some of the shavings. I don't know if y'all can see that. Some of the shavings of the epoxy right there. So if you can see it right here, get some more off of there. So this is good for times like this, getting epoxy off, or maybe you have some excess wood glue on some seams and some panels. It's a nice little trick to reduce the amount of time that you'll have cleaning it up by sanding. It doesn't mar up your wood too bad. If you angle it wrong, of course it can, but just keep a nice, straight, even pressure. You don't have to press down too hard, but you also don't want to just drag it. You need some pressure down to get it to do what you want. So I'm about to clean this up. I'm going to start sanding again. By the way, it took about four hours to sand this down on all sides just to get it down to 60 grit and somewhat smooth. So I'm expecting quite a few hours of sanding to bring it up from 60 to, I'll probably do 60, 100, 150, 220 and then I'll stop at 220. So depending on who you listen to, some people will say you gotta hit every grid. You need to hit 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 200, 220. And then you can turn right around and listen to another finished carpenter or woodworker. It says they only keep four grits in their wood shop at any given time and that's all they ever do. And they're highly successful, highly respected woodworkers. So. Who's right? Good question. The only way to answer that is figure out what works for you. It might all depend on what kind of finish you're using. If your finish is forgiving, you might be able to skip a few grids. If your finish is unforgiving, you might want to take your time. I'll tell you what, there's no greater, te greater teacher than your mistakes. So learn from them. And... Um, Kind of why I'm making this video, because a smart man learns from his mistakes. A wise man learns from everybody else's too. So, I guarantee you I'll be making a few and I'll be sharing them with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in time lapse and get to work on this.
All right, so we're just about ready to start finishing this. I'm gonna do the top first because, like I said, it's gonna be less important than the front and the bottom. So I can do the top, rotate it, do the front, rotate it, do the bottom, and I'm not gonna worry too much about if this top doesn't come out perfect. So when the finish is touching my pad there, it'll be all right. This Odie's oil comes in a jar, and when it first, when you first open it, it's gonna be very thick. God almighty, I should have done this off camera. So you gotta stir it up. It kinda looks like jelly that's been in the refrigerator for too long. So that part right there, that's not mixed up good. When you get it mixed up good, it's gonna pour similar to honey maybe. I say maybe because that's what every single video I've seen says. This should be the consistency of honey. So you see now it's got a little runnier consistency. And this stuff will cover a lot of square footage. This little jar right here, depending on the wood, can cover 400 square feet. We're definitely not covering 400 square feet. This thing's maybe five foot long, a foot wide at its widest. So we're looking at five square feet for the top, maybe. About the same for the front and definitely less for the back or for the bottom. So now that I've got it mixed up, I'm just gonna get some out. I'm gonna pour it on here. And with this stuff, better to have too little than too much. So start out with just a little bit. You can add more, but you really give yourself a lot of work later if you're trying to take some off when you're buffing. So I'll, you'll hear different things about how to spread it. Spread it with a cloth, spread it with a Bondo spreader, whatever works for you. So I got a Bondo spreader here. And I'm just gonna spread it back and forth. And it is really bringing out this wood, making it pop. This is gonna penetrate the wood, so you really wanna work it into the wood. So I'm not applying much pressure with this Bondo spreader. Just enough to barely put any tension on it and make it bend. So that little gouge I told you about is capturing the Odie's oil. Remember I told you I wasn't worried about it, but I knew it was there. And sometimes I say when you see these things, you might want to rethink your process. That right there makes me wish I had to rethunk my process. Because it's just going to stay there until I buff it out now. I'm not going to be able to dig that out without doing more harm than good. So I'm going to spread this on here. I'm going to spread it on all three sides 
I'm not going to do the back side that goes against the wall. And I just went over that notch again, put more oilies oil in there. Great. Like one of my buddies used to say, great day. He didn't mean it in a great day way. Hope you're watching this, by the way. Great day, guy. So that's pretty much it this is a great project for a beginner I can't express express that enough because it's not supposed to look perfect um, another reason why like a rustic farm table is a good beginner project it's supposed to look like it's got defects it's supposed to look weathered it's supposed to look distressed this does not have to look perfect that being said I'm gonna show you guys a few things that I like about this and a few things that I don't like about it. And some of it's to deal, to do with the Odie's oil that I used. And some of it is mistakes that I feel like I made. that's pretty much it this is a great project for a beginner I can't express express that enough because it's not supposed to look perfect um, another reason why like a rustic farm table it's a good beginner project it's supposed to look like it's got defects it's supposed to look weathered it's supposed to look distressed this does not have to look perfect that being said, I'm going to show you guys a few things that I like about this and a few things that I don't like about it. And some of it's to deal to do with the Odie's oil that I used. And some of it is mistakes that I feel like I made. All right, so here's the end grain on one side. You can see where how deep the resin penetrated into the cracks. That's what you want. You want that deep penetration so that these cracks don't expand and get larger in the future. Remember, this is going to have extreme heat coming under it during the winter time when a fire is going. And remember when I was sanding and I mentioned pigtails and stuff getting trapped between the sanding pad and the material. That is a pigtail. It's not very big, but so you can hardly see it from here, but up close, you can definitely make it out. If that was on a table, I would be extremely mortified right now. There's more right there. So if that was on a table, I would not turn that into a customer like that. I would strip it down, sand it down, and refinish it. I do like some of the effects. I like that right there. I like where the resin is in the cracks. I wanted the cracks to be visible because I wanted that rustic look. 
that's why I went with the black epoxy. The live edge, I love it. Uh, by pressure washing the bark off, instead of hitting it with a wire wheel or some other more aggressive way, it kept some of that texture. Well, texture's the wrong word. Visual texture, I guess, is what I'm looking for. But that almost looks like an ambrosia effect. I put resin in these deep pockets here where I would have difficulty getting in there and sanding good. I got most of the bark out and put the resin in all these holes. I really like it. So even with all that sanding and everything that I did, it's smooth like glass to the touch, but you can still see the visual effects of the sawmill right there. For this piece, I like it, but if that was maybe something different, I wanted a more finished look, I'd be in trouble. Again, I'd be stripping it down and redoing it. I really love this area right here in the middle. A lot of contrasting colors. That's showing yellow on the camera, but it's not yellow here in person. It's just the same color as the sap, um, yeah, the sapwood. So the heartwood is the one with the red and the sapwood is with the yellow. Now I put these two slabs side by side so you can just see the difference. So this slab, I've just done some rough sanding on one end and haven't touched the other end and there's the finished product. So now all I gotta do is mount this bad boy on the wall, finish that one, put it up for sale. So I had fun doing it. I'm gonna love this a lot better than that 1984 mantle that's sitting on my wall right now. And uh, thanks for tuning in. If you liked it, if you got anything out of this, please subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell. Uh, helps us out a lot I will put the links to the things that I described in this video the, the light wand Odie's oil and a few other things that I use down at the bottom I also mentioned uh, black tail studios I'll put his link down in there so that you can check out his channel and some of the amazing tables that he's put together and so the road from novice to pro and do it yourself DIY here we go I got a great piece here I made some mistakes it's got some pigtails uh, if I'd have paid more attention I would have caught that but it didn't happen I still could fix it but it's a mantle and not a showpiece so I'm gonna leave it where it's at I'll probably pay more attention to the one I'm gonna sell but thanks for tuning in I'll see you guys next time